There you go. There. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, you know, there's definitely a big concern about privacy. Um, you know, there's so many things that you can read from whom you're staring at, you know, what your preferences are, uh, what kinds of ads maybe you're interested in, even what your sexual orientation is. There's a lot of things they can deduce from data. And so we're very concerned about um, what that would look like, is going to look like in the VR AR space. I mean, there's other, lots of other concerns too. We're in a really new industry. So these are really great things that are coming up and now you're writing some up. <laughs> Thank <way>. you. <laughs> so, um, so I'm, I'm Jeffrey Jacobson. I've been involved in VR since 1991. I got a PhD in it. And uh, now I'm working at Boston Children's Hospital uh, in their simulation-based training group as their XR guy. Uh, Boston Children is part of Harvard Medical. It's a teaching hospital, uh, which gives them what's the three guys in town who've been doing VR for longer than 20 years continuously all work for Harvard <laughs> now in <laughs> some way or another. So uh, simulation-based training is where we're using medical mannequins for procedure training, team training. Uh, we might use parts like uh, this creepy baby arm <laughs> that it has like a fake pulse and fake arteries and fake blood. So you stick the needle in the right place and you get the little blood return up the needle and all that. I'm working with that right now, this week actually, making an AR set of instructions to help a medical student find that artery in a baby's arm, which is hard. Children. Um, everything is squishy and everything's the same color so <coughs> you have to learn that and um, we also use live actors um, and uh, but you know with the mannequins you can cut into them the live actors don't like it very much <laughs> uh, so VR can potentially you know fill in the, the gap there um, we also do a lot of after action review and uh, you could possibly do that with VR, you know, a little 360 video. Like, how was that for you? And, you know, you say, oh, well, it felt like this, it felt like that. Okay, this is what you saw. Ah, why did you have that expression? You know, um, uh, let's see. So uh, XR can be used for surgery planning. Um, some really smart guys at Brigham and Women's are using uh, CAT scan data and this is a Vive controller and you're able to interrogate the 3D shape like that's a tumor that they're going to cut out of the person. Um, very useful. Uh, surgery <laughs> training. <laughs> okay so the eye is happy with 90 frames a second but the resolution of touch is around 6,000 frames per second, or the equivalent thereof. Mm -hmm. I was talking with a surgeon. She said, the amount of information that I get from the tip of my scalpel mm -hmm. is crucial to when I do operations. Uh, she changed me from an innie to an Audi, an Audi to an innie in one, in one shot. And that's why we were talking, because uh, it was a follow-up visit, and I was fine. So anyway. Um, surgery simulation, you, you really can't get the tactile, but you can get the tactical. Like, this is when you bring the tray over. This is when you, you know, throw the VCR <laughs> into the patient, <laughs> that kind of thing. And it's also good for emotional training because you will respond to a fake environment emotionally as if it were real. Uh, if you have even a halfway decent storyteller behind it. So the people here at BIG do that with 360 videos a lot. Um, again, scenario simulations, these are good. You know, like you could have, these could be sims. They could also be um, other players in a multiplayer VR and running you through a training simulation like, oh my gosh, here's my baby. You know, it's time for the checkup. Baby's turning blue, baby's fine, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, VR can be useful for treatment. So it turns out 
that being involved in a good VR game is equal to a moderate dose of morphine in terms of the degree to which it disassociates you from your body and so that pain is less of a problem. Uh, so it's great for kids who are, have to be immobile for a long period of time going through a procedure. You have to be careful. If the procedure is a little bit painful, they might rip the headset off and go and look at what bit them. So there are some people experimenting with telling stories that incorporate the sensations as part of the story. A simple one is like fish. Fish are nibbling at your arm and oops, there's a pinch and that was actually the needle. So that's, that's a great frontier and there's research going back 20 years on this. Um, uh, VR can, or excuse me, AR can be useful for um, having information ready, available for the doctor just at the right time and just in the right place. So in a real operating room, which I had the privilege of, of observing, being in, they put me in this, it's, it, they call it the bunny suit, it's this white Stay Puff Marshmallow Man <laughs> suit that in, encapsulates you. And they have monitors all over the operating room so the doctors can look up. The problem is they have to look up, right? That's a frame shift. Where here, I don't know why she's looking at a map of Venezuela, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is just a, you know, this was just a, a publicity shot. But theoretically, she could be getting information fed to her without having to look away from the patient. Yeah. Um, uh, AR uh, is having a real renaissance in its use for training, right? Scope AR is a company that's doing a lot, but there are dozens of them. In fact, one of them right here with us. Uh, and um, so if you can use it to fix automobiles, well, why not with medical equipment? So um, the central line is a procedure where they snake a probe in the big uh, artery right here in your shoulder down into your heart with a little camera at the end to see you know what's going on in there and it has to be sterile and the process of sterilizing that is murder I mean it's like a hundred steps and all these little pieces and every year a certain number of people die because somebody missed a step right AR is perfect for that, taking things apart, putting them back together again. And unlike this situation where if you do it wrong, the car probably won't start, if you don't sterilize a piece of this equipment, there's no way to see it. Well, with AR, you can maybe paint objects with a sterile color or do it the other way around. That's an idea. Um, you can also integrate uh, 3D data with medical dummies for training and eventually with real life people but that's that's down the road uh, and of course you can use tablets you don't have to use a HoloLens necessarily um, with a tablet you uh, you have monocular vision so it really it's a lot harder to tell where your fingers are in space when you're looking through the tablet so you, you don't want to use it when you're actually stitching, but you can, it can be useful if you have someone hold it for you. So um, in the hospital at Children's, um, we've got a lot of clinicians asking about AR and VR. I wanted you know, AR for this or VR for that. So we have something like 25 initiatives right now. I mean, that counts everything from someone says, hey, I have an idea, to a doctor <coughs> actually had an app built so that kids could explore their own rectum after a colonoscopy. And the kids love it, you know. They're <laughs> in their <laughs> butthole, you, know, <laughs> you know, going through the 3D scan. Um, and, uh, you know, distraction therapy. Um, Let's see. Oh yeah, telepresence and the OR. Um, you know, 
remotely having remote experts helping to con uh, confer with the surgeons or remote medical students. Um, so the uh, operation I witnessed is a rare birth defect that's like one out of 50,000 kids and there are there's two people at Children's who do it and oops that's it's telling me to shut up. Um, <laughs> yeah, and there's uh, one guy in Cincinnati who does it, and another guy at another hospital, and two of them flew in to see the surgery because to maintain their expertise in this operation, they have to uh, at least visit all the other ones being done. Uh, so with AR or VR, maybe they can do that, you know. Re remotely without having to go physically. So, there you go. It's my Very good.